Starting off the news this week, a paper from the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics has been published this week, describing a nearby celestial object which they think is a black hole. It's the first time a black hole has been discovered by observing star movement nearby, instead of the usual way where a black hole is discovered by observing large amounts of X-rays that are emitted by activity around the black hole. One of the most exciting things about this black hole is how close it is to Earth, only a thousand light years away. While that may seem like quite a distance, in cosmic or even galactic terms that's extremely close, making it the closest black hole discovered so far. In fact, it's so close it's possible to see the two stars that were observed around it, one orbiting it, with the naked eye. Next up is a remarkable paper that has helped uncover new information on the origin of salamanders. It explains how the beginnings of modern amphibians is still something that's not well understood, and how the fossil record of salamanders in particular is very poor, as their delicate skeletons aren't often preserved in rocks from the early Mesozoic when they are thought to have originated. This new research describes a 230 million year old fossil from Kyrgyzstan of a previously known ancient salamander species that has provided new insights into the evolution of this group, pushing back the rock record of these animals by over 60 million years, as well as displaying anatomies that bridge the gap between salamanders, frogs and temnospondyls. And now over to Ben. Thanks Doug. Also this week is a recent paper that has recorded some of the most northerly occurrences of Mosasaur remains currently known to science, from the Upper Cretaceous of the Russian Far East and Nether Polar Urals. The researchers suggest that the polar day conditions during the Cretaceous summers would have been quite suitable for these high latitude Mosasaurs, as permanent light would have meant they could hunt down their prey easily at any time, however they consider it unlikely that they could survive the two months of complete darkness in the winter. Therefore, they take this as indirect evidence that these Mosasaurs at least actually underwent seasonal migrations, which is some pretty interesting inferred behaviour. And finally, some more Arctic Mesozoic reptile news, as a recent paper has re-examined specimens of the hadrosaurid found from the Prince Creek Formation in Alaska. Initially assigned to Edmontosaurus, in 2015 these specimens were referred to a new genus and species, Ugrunaluk kukpakensis. However, this new research has found that the taxonomy of this hadrosaurid is very ambiguous, as the remains are from juvenile individuals. The paper therefore says that these Alaskan hadrosaurs should be reassigned to Edmontosaurus, but should also remain as an uncertain species until either adult individuals of the Alaskan Edmontosaurus or equivalently juvenile Edmontosaurus from lower latitudes are found, so that more confident comparisons can be made. So goodbye to Ugrinaluk, I suppose. It was nice knowing you. Back to Doug in the studio. Anyway, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. Do hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful week. As always, we'll see you on Sunday.